What's the biggest issue for time travel? Urgency. Time travel is so powerful, you're basically a god. You have good examples like Back to the Future where you can pull off a story and only ask two questions. To stupid ones like Avengers Endgame where they broke their own rules and you end up seeing 300 plot holes. Then you have the issues of everyone doing the same thing. Let's go to the Old West. Let's go to the future. Let's see the world end as a dystopia. Limit the time machine, then you can have more interesting ideas. That's where Seven Days is special from most. What's the origin of the machine? The element that allows the sphere to time travel came from the crashed alien ship at Roswell. It's a very rare material that limits the time the ship can travel. It could only go back. The Backstep program was decades of experimentation started by Dr. Metner during the early 50s. You'll remember him from Star Trek TNG's Gambit two-parter. The Russian government also attempted their own program, which failed due to the lack of the alien element. So for 40 years, the secret base called Never Never Land was created to house the project as a hidden branch of the NSA led by director Talmadge, who also played the leader in Stargate Atlantis. More scientists came in, John Ballard, who designed the ship systems and keeps it ready for immediate use. This guy does everything and somehow leads a regular life out of work. By far the most happy guy on the team. Everyone else is just way too serious, especially Nathan Ramsey. He's the base security chief. This guy has a stick up his butt. I get it, this is national security, but he doesn't give anyone a goddamn break. You go out to take a smoke and forget to tell him, he'll haul you to jail. This is the guy you hate, but there are times where he shows compassion and pulls off some good moments. Now, one of the major problems with Backstep is that the sphere is a piece of crap. It's not a fine-tuned machine like the DeLorean or TARDIS. They had to reverse engineer alien tech, then figure out a way to plug in human tech to run it. The time travel process is hell on people's bodies, so several died during the testing phase. The sphere goes through an insane storm during a jump. While it can time travel from a stationary position, once you go, it slingshot itself into space. The controls are bogus. The user has to hold a joystick steady to keep seven markers on a target. This controls how you land while the ship is shaking, the person is being exposed to space, the radiation, and all the temporal forces. You're at the brink of being ripped apart in each jump. The hatch has fallen off many times. The major problem the program has is finding the best chrononaut. They need to have a person who has very high tolerance to pain. If you can't handle it and you let go of the stick, you're pretty much paste on a wall. They were looking everywhere to find a person who could handle the ship. They did have one staff member, Craig Donovan, Navy SEAL, full military, tough as nails, last year lost his job on Sequest, but his pain threshold's too low. Dr. Olga Vukovic, the sole person from the failed Russian project, does double duty as being the control room operator and on-base doctor. Always kept Craig grounded and kept looking for someone else. It eventually became a running joke. Craig never got to pilot the sphere officially. Just before he was about to do it, got pulled every single time. The one person Craig did suggest was a former friend and Navy SEAL, stuck inside a mental institution. Thanks to his last mission, Frank Parker was captured and tortured. He broke down, his wife divorced, and didn't see his son for many years. Everyone was against Parker. Even Parker was against it, especially Ramsey. He's unstable, a lunatic, and they're right, but they tested him. That tortured experience gave him the edge. Parker was able to control the ship better than anyone. This was my favorite part about Seven Days. Usually you get really cool time travel devices at work. This thing is a death trap if you just sneeze on it. Now the meat and the potatoes. What are the rules with time travel? You don't have to worry about much. It's kept very simple. Basically, the universe cleans up itself. When Frank Parker backsteps, he brings all his knowledge, items, and the sphere along. When he jumps back seven days, the Frank, sphere, and anything going on that would be in the past timeline are erased from existence. No chance of having doubles. The characters don't even realize there was a backstep. The timeline is immediately shifted to the new one. Basically, same matter can't be in the same space at the same time. Even though Seven Days is a sci-fi series, honestly, it's more of a regular cop show. It plays out like 24 in a lot of ways. Franks has to deal with his life, he's allowed to see his son, see his former wife, but then he also has to deal with the guilt of not being able to use the sphere for saving anyone. That's one of the limitations the program has. Once the ship backsteps, 
it takes basically seven days to recharge the fuel source, so they can't do a third take. If Frank fails, he's stuck with it. The project is also restricted in what counts as national security. Huge arguments happened all the time. Not even the president knows the backstop. In some cases, it goes too far where Frank ends up stealing the ship. Season one was the best one. I really liked where everyone went. Each one had a place on the team, even Ramsey. We got to know their lives outside the base. Everyone had to get used to Frank. He was a nutbag. A few times Parker had to stop Talmadge's death without telling people, saying like the Pope was killed. I remember when the show was being reviewed on TV Guide, a lot of people said the stories were simple and didn't fit into the usual sci-fi style. That's a bad thing? You had episodes where the base was exposed, bad guys were going to use the sphere, Talmadge pulled off some Rambo moments, there was a series long arc with Volkovich, she kept denying liking Parker. It was obvious, everyone saw it, but Frank kept screwing it up, lots of times he would try to impress her, but she found out he stole something, lied, or tried to use his knowledge of the past. Talmadge has family which was endangered a few times, forcing him to sabotage Backstep or taken hostage. Craig helped Frank through his mental issues, and Mettner exposed what really happened at Roswell in the season finale. It was hidden that the alien who crash landed wasn't actually killed. It woke up, broke out, and used radiation at a power plant to recharge his ship, causing a nuclear explosion. The alien wasn't actually an escapee and was intended to be killed by its people. Seven Days handled this alien stuff good. It didn't feel out of place. They gradually had one episode that dealt with the alien ship, then another, the alien itself. Didn't go full on space sci-fi. Everything took place on Earth and explained why the element allows time travel. It's their way of moving through the universe. Each season gave a few sci-fi episodes mixed in with the usual Bourne-like stuff. The one I remember the most, the base was fractured by the alien. Ballard was stuck sped up, other places were frozen in time, there was one that had Parker duplicated thanks to a malfunction on the ship, they even set up things. One of the original test spheres re-entered normal time, the pilot was killed, which became handy a few episodes later when the main sphere was blown up thanks to a terrorist group. So when Frank went back, they had two spheres. There were a few changes that went on. The cast was reduced, Metner became a guest actor, they didn't use him much since everyone did almost the same thing, too many chefs in the kitchen. Craig got the short end of the stick, he couldn't be a chrononaut so he kind of disappeared for episodes. The worst cast change came with Ballard. He had some good focus episodes, his best was when he was able to walk. But the actor was diagnosed with cancer, so Sam Wimple left after three episodes of season three. He got replaced with a new guy, Andrew was all right, but it wasn't the same. The Olga and Frank storyline reached its peak where Frank finally stopped being stupid and her seeing that. He wasn't a bad man, it was because he got so screwed up being a POW. He did whatever and didn't care. I'm not excusing it, but it's his version of being drunk where they started dating near the end of the series. Seven Days ultimately was canceled for a few reasons. It had lower ratings than UPN wanted, but it wasn't bad. It got moved around. First it was with Voyager, then Sentinel took that spot, so it was moved to Thursdays. What really killed it was Justina Val leaving. The cast had issues with her, she had issues with them. You could see during season three, Olga had vanished for a while, then came back where she started liking Parker. This is where she agreed to film stuff to wrap up that storyline. But UPN knew the Frank Olga stuff was what fans liked the most. Without that, there was no reason to make a season four. So the show got canceled. No cliffhanger, just your run of the mill episode. It's really unfortunate. It was a unique spin on time travel. I think the cast was nice. You had the scientist versus military dynamic, which evolved into everyone working together. A recovering military officer turned hero. He saved the whole world a few times. Even Val won Best Supporting Actress in 2000. That back and forth between Olga and Parker, the one minute it's comedy, the next it's tension. You knew the aliens were keeping a lookout on them, so that story wasn't over with. I always wanted to see them attempt bigger episodes. The closest was when a future time of the Backstep program came back to present day. It was almost the whole Cable coming back and meeting the X-Men stuff. Like I said, very little to complain about. Check it out if you're interested in mixing genres. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscure stuff.